up everyone, it's the Yorkshire Panda and this is Create Above and Beyond but something a little bit different. We're going to do a little tutorial on how to get infinite power out of your furnace engine. So I've played around with a couple of setups. This is a perfect early furnace engine setup that is completely 100% renewable and has no downtime whatsoever so we've got our furnace engine got this little rotation let's go through each step by step so first of all the hell bark log it is a tree that you can find in the nether in one of the uh, bi uh, new biome plenty biomes that allows you to grow a tree they can be a little awkward so if we were to get a hell bark and some phyto grow. When you come to grow these, more often than not, you'll get this little one high bush. You need to keep doing this until you get a tree, which can be a couple of those. You could be at this 10 minutes and not have a tree. So this is really the game of patience. But once you've got your Hellback tree, you stick four Arboreal Extractors around it and some pumps. I've gone overboard on the pumps, you only need one. But uh, stick some pumps on it and you can pump out the lava. All of that lava needs to go into a spout. Here. Now, as for the furnace engine, you put your blast furnace down, you put your engine on the top, you put your flywheel across from it. This belt rotates around, we pull out an empty bucket and we push in onto this side, effectively a bucket of lava, which we can see here. So once this is finished burning, it'll take the lava out of the bucket, burn it. That bucket will then come onto this platform, this uh, conveyor. The spout will fill it back up with lava, and it'll go inside. It take the time it takes for this to produce a bucket of lava is slightly less than the time that lava burns. So one tree with four abirial extractors gives you one bucket of lava per burn. So one definitely any if you want to do any more furnace engines, you either need more of these trees or you need to go down the road of um either a lava pump in the nether or transporting lava through minecarts, which I've seen done as well. That kind of thing. So as for the furnace engine itself, the blast furnace will cook something to work if it's not cooking anything it doesn't work now i have got as you just saw then slime balls in here slime balls cook into slime crystals but it's a 20 second craft so these are a good item to use you'll have plenty by the time you get to this point um and if not they're easy enough to find on the overworld uh, you just look for areas like that they have slime balls in them and there's plenty of those kind of areas. You do need to find them later on anyway, so you will come across them in, in the process of playing. So what you have is a chute directly above the blast furnace and a fan. It is important the fan is pulling. So if the fan's pushing, no good. If it's pulling, it'll pull the slime balls straight out the top of the furnace and it'll hover in the chute. Above the fan, you have a shoot, uh, gear shift that then connects up to your whole system. You can use a old redstone clock, but I you can make the timer from a red alloy. So let's uh, timer. There you are, which is here. 
Now, the craft for this is a circuit assembly, which is made from a circuit plate, an anti-alloy, and red wire. Circuit plate is just cook smooth stone, red alloy wire. A little awkward to make early on, but you just need a compactor, redstone, and copper ingots to make the red alloy. So it's not too hard to get. early on. So once you've got that you get your timer set up and then you need an adjustable repeater. So again made the same way and I've got it set to 10 ticks. 10 ticks seems to be the right amount of time to switch off the gear shift long enough for the slime to fall back into the furnace. There are, you probably could do all this with normal redstone, with normal redstone repeaters and just a redstone clock, so you don't need these two, but to keep everything compact, these are your best two items. So the timer's set to 10 seconds, the repeater set to 10 ticks, you can set that slightly longer, but you want it to set, you don't want them slime balls to cook at all, so 10 seconds is just a nice easy number to use. And as you see, every time it spins and hits this, it switches off the gear shift, which switches off the fan, which the chute deposits the slime balls back into the furnace, which means this keeps cooking, but it doesn't finish the actual recipe. So the slime balls will never get cooked. And so once you do the first one, and all this starts spinning, you can walk away. That's it, you're done. You don't need to do anything else at all with this entire setup. You do lose a couple hundred stress units. That's purely because of the fan, the chute, and the pumps. Like I say, I've gone overkill with these. You could just have one pump here connected up to all these, and it would work just as well. Um, in fact, let me show you that. Uh, pump. There you are. Pipes. So if I was to just replace all these pipes, all I would do is here stick a gearbox, stick a cog there turn that into a pump make sure it's spinning the right way which it is perfect and away we go now you see that was very nearly finished cooking the lava bucket this is already full so once that's done it'll take in the lava continue cooking the bucket will spin round fill back up again and pop back in just like this Bucket moves, fills back up, in it goes, carries on. Now, I do recommend having a extra source of power just coming off of here. Either a water wheel or a, um, a windmill. Just something to give this a little bit of an extra backup. Just in case the timing is slightly out of sync and this does start to slow down, it's not going to immediately lock up everything in your network. It'll have a little bit of backup. Ideally, once you get to the point where you can make ender tanks, you would have one of those sat on top of this spout, and this then, you could extend these conveyors out as far as you want, and have multiple blast furnaces running at the same time, which is what I've got set up at the minute in my own uh, Let's Play. But just with two to begin with, but that's going to expand much bigger, so you'll get to see that as well once it's uh, a bit more complete. And then all you need to do now is off of here, hook up wherever you need to hook up, get yourself a speed... Uh, controller which 
that's it, speed rotation controller. I can never remember the name of those things. And a large cog wheel. Slap that on. And you've got all the power you need. Or better still, you could just even slap it there. Coming off. And you've got everything. So yeah, that is a fully renewable completely standalone don't need to do anything you can set it up ignore it walk away automated furnace engine and turn the weather off and that's that so i might do a couple more of these little tutorials because some of the automation in this pack is a little difficult <laughs> or a little bit, uh, certainly a little bit cumbersome. But there are a few tips and tricks that will make this pack so much easier. So we'll drop a few more videos like this. But as always, make sure if you like the video, hit the like button. If you liked it a lot and want to see my Let's Play in full, hit the subscribe button, check out my playlist. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you get to see when any new videos come out, as well as little things like this that I might do every now and again. And... Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Rocks Panda. Catch my streaming on there as well, especially the things that aren't Minecraft related. And drop it to the comments if there's any other little how-tos, any other tips or things that you stuck with on the pack. Drop me a message, let me know. More than happy to put out a video and see what uh, kind of solutions that could come up for you. But besides all that, you guys take it steady, have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.